All right, mate, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. It is time for the Premier League predictions video, the big one every single year. This one, of course, for the 21-22 season. Let's go for it. We don't need to retread old ground. We know, you may have seen, I did okay in certain aspects of last year's Premier League predictions, at least in the, in the sense of getting the top four bang right, which not many people did. Obviously, we're going to give it our best shot this year. Uh, I would normally rather make this video a little bit nearer the start of the season. I'm recording this on the Monday. The season starts on the Friday, but a few scheduling conflicts mean that I've got to get it done today. So I still think there's going to be a lot of business done this week, perhaps some title changing business, some relegation saving business, but we'll work with what we've got as things stand. But my friends, before I get into my Premier League predictions, I have to tell you about Ultimate Fan. If you don't already know about Ultimate Fan, you're having a stinker, okay? If you watch some of my content during the Euros to the England games, you would have seen me talking about it. It's a mixture of fantasy football combined with like... Uh, Ultimate Team pack openings. It's really good. They had it out for the Euros and they've brought it back for the Premier League. This game is free to play. It doesn't cost you a penny to download it. What are you waiting for? But crucially, crucially, you can make money. In fact, playing it during the Euros, I made £290. Fact. Now you can choose to spend money. You can spend a maximum of £4.99 a month to get the gold membership, which gets you one extra pack every week, or £2.99 on the silver membership, which also gets you the extra pack every week, although less likely to get gold players in them. But more importantly, you can win money without spending a penny. So you can see the game has not only been redeveloped for Premier League football, but also there's been loads of things that have been added to it. Pretty soon you're going to be able to transfer unwanted players. For example, I recently got a second Rodri player from Man City. I've put him on my sort of discard list and I'll be able to trade him with other users. In terms of prize money, there's a £15,000 prize pot for game week one of Premier League football. £300,000 for the entire season. Every single game week is a new competition. So don't worry if you're watching this video and the Premier League season's already started. You can join at any point and each new game week is a new competition. This is a great time to get on Ultimate Fan, guys, because it's still a very, very new app, which means there's less people playing. The prize pot stays the same. But while there's less players on the app, this is your best chance to get in and get some dosh. You do have to be over 18 to play the app, though, of course, guys. I've got to say that. And it's for UK and Ireland only at the moment. This is the team I'm going to be starting the season with. I've got Liverpool as my club. So if Liverpool win, I get more points. Luke Shaw and Cancelo as my defenders, both attacking fullbacks for the two Manchester clubs. I've gone with the two strikers and two midfielders option. My two midfielders Kevin De Bruyne he's got the armband it's always a Belgian we've got Tielemans another Belgian from Leicester two forwards Bamford and Kane don't know if he's gonna be at Tottenham don't know if he's gonna be at City but either way I hope he plays and I hope he scores goals because he's got my golden boot so I'm pretty happy with my team and it's only gonna get better as I get more packs they've also added a brand new game mode for Ultimate Fan called UF Clash where you go head to head with another player and if you win you get special rare cards for your team it's a really great app guys it's really exciting to be part of it as it's literally starting because I think it could be absolutely massive check out the link in the description to download it. Let me know in the comments below who is in your team for game week one of the Premier League. Okay, now it's time to do what you came for and give my prediction, starting off with the relegation spaces. Usually you see a lot of newly promoted teams in here. Will there be all three? No, but I have gone with two, starting off with Watford. I just can't see Watford staying up. I'm sorry. I've got nothing against them. It's impossible to make this video without alienating a certain segment of my viewers here because there's always people that don't want to be predictably going down or unhappy with where I put their team. I have to pick someone. I'm going with Watford. They're not the only newly promoted team either. I'm tipping to go straight back down. The other is Norwich, okay? Just haven't seen the purchases I think are going to be necessary to keep both these teams in the league. Obviously, that could change, but I think the squad is, both squads are, are going to struggle, really. Norwich have obviously lost Buendia as well to Aston Villa, huge player for them. There's still rumours Cantwell could potentially leave. Have they strengthened enough? I, I just don't see it. I don't see it. Sorry, uh, happy to be proved wrong, but same for Watford and Norwich, both back down. But this next one was tough. Who did I have to finish 18th and just join Watford and Norwich back in the championship? It was between a few, I'll be honest. And the team that I haven't gone with, I've put one spot above, so I can reveal them at the same time. But in 18th position, perhaps surprisingly, Southampton. I think Southampton are going to go down. Okay, even though I think Hassan Hootel's a decent boss, their squad is weaker massively without Danny Ings, who of course has gone to Aston Villa. I'm looking around their squad. And even Ward Prowse, who's been a stalwart there, has been linked away. If he goes as well, I can only see Nathan Redmond as someone that's going to win them games. Okay, maybe I'm being a little bit unfair on Che Adams, who does score some goals, to be fair to him. It's starting to look not like a Premier League squad for me. They've got a couple of OK defenders in there, sure. Ryan Bertrand's moved on as well. He's gone to Leicester. I think they're going to have a tough year. 
And I think Crystal Palace can have a tough year, who I've got only one spot above, just beating the drop. Uh, obviously lost Roy Hodgson. Now, say what you like about Roy Hodgson. He's retired. He's had an unbelievable career, but he just got the job done. Maybe he wasn't the right man for the England job or the Liverpool job, but he was very good at keeping very average teams in the league. Now, the reason I'm not going with Palace to go down, because, by the way, I love Patrick Vieira as a man and as a player. Um, I don't know if I rate him as a manager. He could prove me wrong, but I've looked at his other jobs he's done. And I'm not sure he's cut out for Premier League management. I'm really not. I think they'll have a tough year too. But the reason they haven't got Palace going down is at the moment, at this point in time, they still have Zahar. And coming back from injury, they have Eberichi Eze. These guys could be enough. They have lost Andros Townsend though. And that's actually quite a big loss for them, I think. He's a decent player. He's gone to Everton. And they brought in Anderson from Fulham. He's a solid defender, but... I still think that defence looks quite weak. It's always very difficult to get the exact three teams that go down. There's a couple in and around there that could drop. But I have gone in 16th with Brentford. I think Brentford are going to avoid it. Usually I like to tip at least one team that's come up to do it. I think they've got the right things in place to do it. They've got a lovely new stadium. They've got an approach to transfers that I, I, I enjoy, personally. I really want to see what Tony can do at this level. Obviously scored a load of goals at the championship. He's got a little bit of a, um, a chip on his shoulder, I reckon, about not really making it at this level previously. He wants to prove people he's a Premier League striker. We're going to find out if he is. And even though I don't think they do have any huge names in there, that's not really what Brentford are about. And I think they could do a little bit of a Leeds this year, not quite as well as Leeds have done, but just do enough to stay in the league. I'd like to see it. In 15th, I'm going with Burnley. Every single year, I kind of feel the same about Burnley, which is why I'm amazed, personally, that Sean Dyche is still there. Because he never really gets any... Anything meaningful to work with financially. He can never make forward strides. It seems like for Burnley, and I understand why, keeping themselves in the league every year should be a realistic aim for them, but like a, a good enough aim for them. They're not trying to kick on because many teams have tried to kick on from that and paid the price at a later date. Burnley aren't a, a massive club. If they can continue to sustain Premier League status for you know, the, the near and medium term future, that's amazing for them. So I understand why they're not risking it lows financially and they're kind of just slowly consolidating their position but for me Sean Dyche is the reason they're still in this league and I don't know why he hasn't left yet I don't know why he hasn't gone maybe he just thinks he's the perfect fit maybe he hasn't had the right offer but as long as he's there they've got a chance that's why I'm not tipping them to go down even though I have said previously in videos I do think Burnley's time is coming to an end even Sean Dyche if he stays there long enough will take them down eventually unless something drastic changes I'm going to back him to do it again if he stays. In 14th position, I'm going Newcastle. Uh, they could be in and around the lower places this year, but as I'm recording this, it's looking very likely they're going to get Willock from Arsenal, who is huge for them in the latter part of the season. Big addition if they bring him in. And I think Steve Bruce, as much as he's not the sexiest of managers, you know, Newcastle fans maybe wish they had someone else, I think he's the right man to just keep them where they need to be. Could they be in a relegation battle? Yes, they definitely could. But equally, they could be fairly safe in and around the, the mid-table. That's why I've got them in 14th. In 13th, it's the old rivalry, me and Brighton. Brighton fans, they don't like me. They think I don't like them. I've got nothing against Brighton. Uh, I did have a little bit of a go on Twitter about some of the arrogance of certain Brighton fans using the XG stat last year because whilst we... And I do appreciate stats, and there's definitely a place for them for sure. Uh, the only stat that really matters is points. And they were in a relegation battle last year. That, that's just the reality of it. Even though they had much better goal difference than the teams around them. And even though XG proved that they should have done a lot better based on the chances they created, they weren't taking them. So I'm surprised to see they haven't gone out. and Because for me, I know they've lost Ben White, obviously, which is a huge loss to Arsenal. Loads of money, though. For me, though, if they went and got a decent striker, maybe a couple of new attacking options that really converted those XG stats into goals. And we could see those Brighton fans' uh, confidence in their squad actually being repaid with a top-half finish. I do believe Graham Potter is a good manager. I do believe there's a nice um, kind of uh, strategy in play at Brighton. But they need the personnel now. That's just a fact. And they've lost one of their best players in Ben White. But I still think they're going to be good enough. I hope you know that XG stat, if you believe in it, does come through for them. They do a little bit better this year. But I still think they're not going to be any better than 13th. I don't think I'm making a huge uh, error here. I'd be amazed if at the end of the season I'm sitting here going, I can't believe I got that one wrong. Brighton finished 6th or 7th. I just can't see it. In 12th, I'm going with Wolves. Obviously, no Nuno Espirito Santo. Uh, he's not there. He's gone to Spurs, of course. I've also lost the likes of Rui Patricio in goal. Unbelievable goalkeeper. Um, they're a steady ship, aren't they, Wolves? I expect them to be again because they have the ability to attract very good uh, foreign, usually Portuguese players. You've got a new Portuguese manager, of course. And you can't discount the effect that Raul Jimenez coming back 
could have, could have. Because his absence last year was definitely felt. Uh, they just didn't have another way to play. They didn't have a striker. Fabio Silva, good player, young player, but nothing like Jimenez in the way he plays. And they just couldn't adapt to that system change. If he can come back and be like he was before, which I know is a big ask with the, the head injury that he did suffer. But if he can, that is worth 10 points to them this year, I would say, as a difference between last year and this year. So I think they'll be around mid-table. Though. I don't think they're going to be challenging for European spots, but I don't think they'll be in a relegation battle, really. Now, you may have noticed I haven't said my club yet, West Ham. Last year, I went unusually low with my prediction and it I say it worked it was wrong because West Ham did really well last year didn't they in the league I'm going to put West Ham in a conservative 11th spot here why well our squad I shouldn't say squad I should say starting 11 our starting 11 is decent but we have the poison chalice that is the Europa League to contend with not only do we have to contend with the extra minimum of six games hopefully more in the Europa League this year we have to contend with the traveling we have to contend with the fixture congestion but more importantly we have a very wafer-thin squad that, to be honest, is not big enough for a Premier League campaign alone, let alone a Premier League campaign along with a Europa League campaign. We've barely got 17 players, lads. Our bench will be made up mostly, at this point in time, of kids. If we suffer any significant injuries, West Ham are in real trouble. And even if we don't, we haven't got enough players to play our best team, Premier League and Europa League, game in, game out. He's going to have to, in my eyes, play the kids in, in, Euro- in Europe at the moment, until we get serious investment. I really feel sorry for David Moyes. I think he's a quality manager. I love having him at West Ham. He's not been backed. Now, there is bigger financial things at play here with the likes of of what's happened with COVID and the money that was lost. Uh, But it does seem like West Ham have been one of the most risk-averse clubs in the league at the moment, which is a shame when we've actually kicked on into... Europe, we should be able to attract better players. This should be our best chance of attracting that sort of not top tier, but maybe tier below type of player than ever before because we've got European football to offer and we haven't done that. There's a few names being thrown about. Obviously, we've brought in Ariola, the, the goalkeeper. I think we'll probably share games with Fabianski. Maybe one will do league and one will do Europe. I'm happy with that. But we need a centre-back still. We're linked with Milinkovic. I don't think we've got Zuma, unfortunately. We need a striker desperately because we love Antonio at West Ham. He could become our leading all-time Premier League goal scorer this season. But let's face it, he's an injury waiting to happen and we can't count on him. It's ridiculous that he was our only striker at the club post-January. right? And we got away with that massively, even though he did get injured because we had Jesse Lingard to play as almost like a false nine for a little bit. We haven't got Lingard. He would have come back to us, I believe, if we'd made the right offer. We didn't make that offer. We probably could have got Danny Ings. We probably could have got Tammy Abraham. We probably could have got Zuma if we'd made the offer. We probably could have got Pereira, who left West Brom and has gone to Saudi Arabia, I think. So very disappointed with the lack of ambition. The transfer window is not closed yet, but as it stands, I don't see how we can do any better than 11th with the amount of games we're going to have this year. I was going to originally predict us like 17th or 16th, to be honest, because I think it's going to be a real challenge to compete on these, you know, domestic and European fronts. Uh, Being a little bit optimistic here, it won't go better than this. I I really don't believe that we'll do better than 11th this year, unless we do some madness in the transfer window in the next week or so, which just isn't going to happen, guys. It isn't going to happen. There was also talk of a West Ham takeover as well. Um, I can't see that happening either, so... I'm just going down the line with West Ham. It could go much worse than this. I'm being a bit hopeful and saying we'll get 11th. Okay, into the top half. And I have not said Leeds yet, but I'm going to say them now. Leeds are in 10th. Bielsa, what a hero of Leeds he is at the moment. I think he's going to continue to just solidify their position. Uh, The Leeds squad isn't a lot better than a lot of the squads that I've said already to finish lower that that the x factor they have is Bielsa I mean Bamford obviously had a great year last year if he can continue that he might get a look in the England squad which he didn't get last year they've brought in a a few faces but Leeds just go about their business in a very professional way at this point in time Uh, he obviously hasn't working very hard those people that hadn't had a year in the Premier League have got that under their belt now sometimes you see clubs come up and impress and then they have that tough second season I'm not sure Bielsa is going to let that happen as long as he's at the helm I think they'll be around the mid-table positions. Okay, ninth position. New manager has come in here at Everton. Rafa Benitez, I've got him in ninth. Now, Rafa is definitely capable of taking Everton higher than ninth. I just don't think he's got the squad for it at the moment. The signings he's made have been practical, if a little underwhelming. They needed pace out wide. He identified that. They did some good deals to get in Townsend on a free transfer and a very small fee they paid for Damari Gray, formerly of uh, Leicester, of course. These aren't game-changing signings. Uh, There's 
whole stuff going on with Sigurdsson right now, which I won't get into, but that's a potential player they've lost there as well. Uh, if the you know if the rumours are to be believed, so I just don't I haven't seen the when 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 Ancelotti came in at Everton, he brought like James Rodriguez in early doors, and he just sort of went, you know, like this is what you get with a manager of this ilk. I feel like Benitez is he's kind of come out of the European game, he's gone to China, he's come back. Has he still got that allure? Can he bring those players in? If so, why isn't he doing it? Everton, the Everton owners of late have backed their last few managers quite substantially. They've spent money, and we haven't seen Benitez really do that yet. So I feel like they're probably planning something. But going with what I currently know, Everton are ninth for me. In eighth, I'm going with the team who just sold a player for a record fee for any English player. That player was Jack Grealish, and that club is Aston Villa. Great season last season. Maybe a little bit underwhelming in terms of where they actually finished on the league table when you consider some of the performances they put in. Uh, they did lose Grealish for a little bit for injury. And I really enjoyed the video that Perzo, Christian Perzo put out at Villa about their strategy. Once they realised they were going to lose Jack, they decided, you know, we're going to take this 100 million, which they knew they were going to get because that was his release clause. And we're not going to try and replace him because it's impossible. We're going to replace him with three, maybe more players. And they've gone out and they've got uh, Danny Ings, obviously, as a striker, as a goal scorer. And um, they've gone out and got Leon Bailey, the Jamaican winger, who has been rumoured to be coming to the Prem for a while. We're going to get to see him in action. And of course, really early in the window, they got Buendia. What I love about this is they signed all three of them before they officially had the Grealish money, which is good business because the minute everyone knows they've got the 100 mil in the bank, all those players would have cost an extra 5, 10, 20 million. They got him in first, which was a bit of a risk if Grealish hadn't gone, but I think they knew they were going to lose him. They backed their manager. They spent the money before they had the money coming in. They went and got Buendia at the start of the window in the, in the knowledge that if... Grealish has stayed. They've just got two really good players that can play in a number of positions. So I like Villa. The Grealish loss will hurt them, but we know Danny Ings can play in the Prem. Brendia's had a season in the Prem already as well. If Bailey can hit the ground running, they've actually got a much deeper squad now, particularly in attacking areas. So as long as that void of Grealish going is filled, which I think personnel-wise they've done a really good job of doing, I think they'll have another good season. In seventh, I'm going with Spurs. Now, um, it's always difficult to try and be original in that sort of top six, seven spots because it's always those same teams. But it's not about originality. For me, it's about practicality. What do I think Spurs will do? Well, it's new manager. You know, Harry Kane is the elephant in the room. Is he going to go? Is he going to stay? By the time you are seeing this video, he might already have gone. I don't know. But at the moment, there's no signs of an imminent transfer. Maybe this messy situation has put a spanner in the works from City's perspective. I don't know. If he stays, Harry Kane and Son link up. You know, that's, that's enough to get you seventh on its own, to be honest. It basically was what happened last year. Tottenham were really good going forward. They had two of the, the highest scorers in the league, but defensively they were poor. Obviously, Mourinho's gone. They've made some big additions. They've got the big centre-back in from uh, from Atalanta. Alderweireld's left. That kind of feels like a new era of, of Tottenham, particularly at the back now, which is what they needed for a while. But it's a lot of change, particularly if Kane leaves and they have to bring in a replacement. They're in the Europa Conference League as well, which is going to be a lot of you know far-flung trips to random corners of Europe that is going to hurt them in terms of fixture congestion so I think that's going to hold them from doing much better than seventh but we'll put them in and around that spot in sixth I'm going with Leicester now we all love Leicester don't we I mean unless you're a rival fan of a local club that's not Leicester everyone loves Leicester they just seem to be a club doing things properly even when they lose the big players they replace them immediately with a new unfound talent they've got Brendan Rodgers at the helm they've got a a, 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 a say lovely story a, a, a tragic story really of their ownership but obviously what's come through with the, with the death of their previous owner and his son taking over in that moment when they won the FA Cup last year and all the players rallied around him. It, it's a nicely run club. They do things the right way. The relationship between the chairman, the manager and the players seems solid, which is the most important part of anything. So I think they're going to do well. I think they've uh, added well. I mean, obviously they've got the Europa League. That's the only reason I'm not tipping them to challenge the top four like they sort of were for most of last season. They were unlucky to not get it. I just think the Europa League fixtures is going to be a lot for them. Uh, they've lost Fofana as well to, a, I think it was a leg break, and I think he'll be out for at least half the season, um, if not more. So that's that's a shame, because he was one of those big names they brought in last year who really did well. Uh, but I, I do like Leicester. I back them. They've got depth, and they've got a great recruitment strategy. So I think they'll be around the European spots once again. Now, in fifth, the last team I've got to miss out on Champions League football is Arsenal. Now, Arsenal could have gone either way. You know, some people would say, I've backed Arsenal too much here and they're actually going to be lower down based on their previous performances in the last few seasons. Um, some people probably say they're going to do better than that. I think fifth's about right. The big reason for this is they're not in European football. They've got that squad that they can just concentrate on Premier League games and maybe the domestic cups too. The addition of Ben White is huge. If he can become the centre-back that he appears capable of becoming, 
That's massive. Not just the fact that he's quality, but the fact he's English, I actually think it's a massive thing. Um, Arsenal have lacked an English spine for some time. You know, and it is important to have at a club to get those those um, overseas players around you and show them what it means to play for this club. Show them why this club's a big club. Show them what, what it means to the fans and make them understand what you're trying to do. And I think Ben White could do that. He could even be a future captain along with the likes of Kieran Tierney at left-back. Big fan of his. Obviously, the Scott, he's a, he's, a, he's a battler. Maybe he misses a few too many games through injury for me for him to really kick on. But if they can keep him fit, their defence is looking so much more solid. The Congas come in. I was looking forward to seeing uh, Thomas Partey get a, a new season under his belt, but he's got some sort of injury. Um, they're trying to maybe get another attacking player. That Erdegaard could come back now on a permanent deal. Can they get James Madison? I'm not sure about that one. There was going to be a, a chance to Chaka left, but he seems to be staying now. Bellerin might leave. The core of the squad is still very much the same from last year, though, isn't it? A few guys now with a bit more Premier League experience will help them. But I don't think they're going to get top four. Uh, but they could get fifth. And that's what I'm going to go with for Arsenal. Now, this top four has been tough. I've gone back and forth a few times. I always like to try and get the top four right if I can. I know I did last year, but it's harder than you think. Uh, in fourth, I'm going with Chelsea. Now, I know what you're thinking. They've just won the Champions League. It's Chelsea. And they could be bringing in Lukaku. That seems to be the big one. They're bringing in 100-odd, 115 million, something crazy. Chelsea, they're funny, aren't they? They had Lukaku, they let him go. He gets a lot better. They pay 100 and whatever million for him to bring him back. But if it works, it works. And they win the Champions League. Yeah, they've, they've proven that. They've won it a couple of times since Abramovich took over. City still haven't won it. So Chelsea's strategy is working. And Lukaku could be, I wouldn't say the final piece of the puzzle. Because as much as winning the Champions League is huge, it, it, it's cup football. You know, league football, I still think they're a little bit underwhelming last year. And I haven't seen massive changes player-wise, to make me think that's going, to, that's going to be a big difference. I mean, defensively, they haven't done much. They've, they've got rid of Tomori, who wasn't playing anyway. But they needed a big centre-back for me, Chelsea. needs needed to get you know someone in to just marshal that defence. Um, I, I, you know, I look at the likes of Rudiger, Christensen. Zuma's still there at the moment. Who is the starting centre-back partnership there? Thiago Silva's obviously there, but he's another year older. I think they're easily going to get top four. But I do not know if they're going to be title contenders just yet. The Lukaku thing could change that, but I still feel like their defence isn't a title-winning defence. So let me know if you think I'm wrong in the comments below. In third, I'm going with Manchester United. Now, I backed them to finish second last year. Not many people did, and I got that one right. Um, and they added Sancho, who is going to be a great addition. It's a really, really good transfer. And my opinion of Solskjaer, I would admit, is slowly changing. Um, he's never, I don't think, going to really inspire confidence in me, but he could just be the right man for that club. I may be starting to come round to that. Do I think he's going to have a Sir Alex Ferguson reign of, of trophies? No, but no one does that anymore. He could just be the right man for a couple of years. And I certainly think he's worthy of the job right now, based on what he did last year. Uh, he could use a trophy. A trophy would be big if he goes and wins, you know, a cup or whatever. And I think third is actually a decent finish, but their defence is really coming together. Look at the player Luke Shaw's become. you then got Maguire. If they get Varane, which seems to be happening, but still isn't confirmed as I'm filming this, but if they get Varane, wan Bissaka at right back, Based on what I was just saying about Chelsea, that to me seems like a Premier League winning defence. You know, still not sure which goalkeeper should be in goal. I personally would end the De Gea era now and concentrate on Henderson or finding someone else. And then you've got the midfield. You've got the never-ending transfer saga that is Paul Pogba. Will he stay? Won't he stay? He's still there for now. McTominay, is he good enough? Is he that CDM they need? Or Fred or any of these guys? Matic, obviously really old now, basically. You've got Hernandez. You've got Van der Beek. Something's quite not right there for me, but some fantastic players. And then, of course, you've got Sancho adding to the likes of Rashford, Greenwood, Cavani. He's still got easily another season of goals in him for me. They could finish second. They could be in a Premier League title race. But I think they're just going to miss out. And I think they're going to go third. And in second, I've got Liverpool. Now, I, I backed Liverpool to, to have a, a poorer year by their standards last year, which few people did. And I didn't predict the Van Dijk injury, but I did think something was going to hurt them last year because I felt they'd been really lucky with injuries in previous years. But Van Dijk's back. Gomez is another one returning. They've brought in Canate. That defence now, they've basically said, we're not letting that happen again. By bringing in Canate now, they've got cover. They've got really good cover, in my opinion, from when I've seen him play. Um, so I'm not worried about them defensively. They have lost Wijnaldum, though. They have lost Wijnaldum, and that could be a huge loss. I'm still looking for them to do a bit more business. 
And I'm relying, based on this prediction, on that Salah, Mane, Firmino triple threat attack to, to give it at least one big year of a push. I don't think it's going to be enough to win the league, but I think they'll probably feel a little bit hard done by last year and they've got a, a bit of a, the hunger back to try and go back for the title. But I think they're not going to make it. I think Man City are going to stop them. Now, look at Man City's squad. The Jack Grealish transfer was ridiculous in terms of it added another unbelievable attacker to what is already an unbelievable attack. Him and De Bruyne are linking up with Mares and Sterling. Bernardo Silva could be moving on. It's frightening. It really is. The defence is quality. I mean, Diaz has made Stones twice the player he was. They've got Laporte in backup. Honestly, it's a great team. Solid goalkeeper, of course. Um, Fernandinho is not getting any younger. They're going to really be reliant on, on Rodri and, uh, and Gundogan in the middle. I didn't even mention Phil Foden, by the way. What a player he will be. He'll be massive this year for sure. Striker is a big issue because we all thought they're going to get Harry Kane. Now, if they get Harry Kane... It's probably the best team ever assembled in Premier League history on paper, I would say. Uh, certainly one of the most expensive. I mean, must be the most expensive if they get Harry Kane. What will be another 100 mil plus transfer? If they don't get Harry Kane, and I'm assuming they're not going to get Messi or anyone like that, they are still lacking a striker. Gabriel Jesus is solid. He'll easily score 15, 20 goals in that team. I'd score 10 goals in that team just from being in the right place at the right time because people around me would be so good. But for me... I want to know what their strategy is there. Are they looking at playing KDB in a sort of false nine role? Could Grealish do that role? I think Pep said when they when he signed him, he could play a number of positions, including as a forward. I think he probably sees him more out wide than, than through the middle, but it could happen. Likewise, Sterling can play through there as well. But I want to see Man City getting a big striker. I think that's the, the thing that would just make them unbeatable. And Harry Kane seems like the obvious choice, considering they've got the money. Oh, I'd love to see Messi in that City team. I'd love to see Messi in the Premier League full stop. But I'm not sure it's going to happen. But yeah, there you go. The top four was tough this year. I think Man City will edge it. It is always hard to win back-to-back -back titles. Only a couple of teams have done it. Uh, but I think this City team is dangerous, isn't it? So um, that's my predictions. Let me know in the comments what you think of them. What are the big errors I've made, guys? Tell me. Have I really done your team dirty? I want to know. In fact, you can give me your whole 20 Premier League teams in the comments if you want. I'll see what your predictions are. Uh, don't forget to get on Ultimate Fan as well. Top quality fantasy football meets Ultimate Team pack opening game. Uh, really, really good fun. Links in the description. Also, if you want any of this hashtag United merch, you've got the new home kit there. You've got our uh, shoulder bag there, bobble hat, T-shirts, loads more stuff. Hashtag UnitedStore.com is the website you need to go to. Hashtag UnitedStore.com. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. But stay safe, guys. Until next time, don't go changing.